Artificial neural networks are great, but they inherently have no idea about the structure of your data. For example, if you train an artificial neural network on images of numbers, it may or may not learn that pixels that are near to each other tend to be related. This is where convolutional neural networks come in. Convolutional neural networks are a type of neural network designed for data that is spatially related. That is, each input is related in some way to the inputs next to it. The obvious example is pictures, where each pixel is related to all of the pixels around it. The core unit of a convolutional neural network is the convolutional layer. What convolutional layers do is train a large number of small matrices called filters to understand relationships between neighboring data. What that relationship is varies wildly, but one example is an edge detector, where the output of the filter is this new feature that indicates if there's an edge at this position or not. For a 4x4 picture, or matrix, and a 3x3 filter, the end product of a convolutional layer ends up being a 2x2 matrix. This filter is computed for every valid position in the input, starting at the top left, working right until the end of the row, and then moving down one and repeating for the whole picture. More specifically, for every valid position in the input, it computes the dot product between the filter and that position. So if you have a 3x3 filter, such as the horizontal Sobel filter, and a 5x5 input, it will take that filter and line it up on the input. And then for every value in the filter, it will multiply that value by the corresponding value in the input and add them together. For this example, we get negative 3 for this first position. Then we move to the next position, typically 1 over, and compute the dot product. Then we repeat until we reach the end of the row, in which case we move down a row, and we keep going all the way until we reach the bottom corner of our input. But that was just the computation for one filter. Convolutional layers usually have many filters. So this process repeats for each filter. So for one 5x5 matrix as input and 100 filters, you will get 100 matrices as the output. Note that the original input is usually much bigger than 5x5, as images can be 1000 by 1000 or larger. But the filters stay small, usually 3x3 three three or 5x5. Five five. To understand larger and larger portions of your input, you stack more and more convolutional layers on top of each other. The idea is that each successive layer builds more general features from the previous layer's features. For example, the first layer may detect edges, the second may combine those edges into basic shapes, the third might join those shapes together, and so on, all the way until we have complex representations for objects like faces or trees. While that example is oversimplified, you can see that by taking a small part of an image, generalizing it, combining it with the neighboring parts of the image, and then generalizing that, and then continuing on in this manner, you can start forming a sense of what an image actually is. By building out our convolutional neural networks in this way, we inherently add a sense of structure to our network. Pixels that are closer together tend to be more related to each other than random pixels across an image. In review, convolutional neural networks are useful anywhere data is spatially related. For example, convolutional neural networks have been very successful in doing anything with images, such as determining what letters in an image, whose face is in that image, and detecting objects in images. In general, convolutional neural networks work by stacking multiple convolutional layers on top of each other to build larger and larger features to understand complex spatial relationships in your data. But I left out some of the details. For example, how many layers do we use in our networks? How do we tell how much of the image that an intermediate convolutional layer sees?